Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for October 20th, 2015 will now come to order. We will uh, begin with the invocation. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Bag if he'll give us the invocation for today, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing on this day. We pray and ask that you uh, continue to lead us and guide us. Help us in our decision making in this business and trying to lead and help this community come together as one. Father, we pray and that you uh, bless us as we journey home this evening and continue to thank us all. In these things we pray and ask your name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Vagley. Our first item of business today is to approve the minutes from the uh, September 15th meeting. Are there any corrections? If there be no corrections to the minutes from our previous meeting, do we have a motion to approve? Motion for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes from the previous meeting are now approved. The next item is the approval of our consent agenda. Uh, the items on the consent agenda are plats that meet the requirements of the City of Longview subdivision ordinance. These items will be approved with one vote unless any member of the Planning Zoning Commission or any member of the public or the applicant would like an item removed from the consent and placed on the regular agenda for discussion. We have one item on that agenda. Do we have a motion? Do we need to read it for the minutes? No. No. I make a motion we approve application P15-11. Second. It's been moved and second to approve application P15-11. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Application is approved. Now we will move on to our regular agenda. The purpose of this meeting is to hear all pertinent testimony of those in support of and in opposition to the applications before the board. Tonight is the first of two public hearings required to approve a change in zoning. The board also considers plats. The procedure for public hearing items to be followed tonight will be the public hearing will be open and testimony will be heard in the following order. Uh, the applicant, staff, the general public, those in support and in opposition to the request. If you are part of a large group with a common interest, we ask that you appoint a spokesperson rather than having each individual restate the same information. When addressing the board, please begin by stating your name and address. Try to limit your comments to five minutes. When all sides have spoken, the public hearing on the matter will be closed. No further public discussion will be entertained. After each public hearing is closed, the board will vote on the request. Zoning requests and the Planning Zoning Commission's recommendations will go forward to the second public hearing, which will be conducted by the City Council on November 12, 2020. 15. Okay, the first item on our regular agenda is application P1510. Public hearing will be considered to held to consider application P1510 Park Central filed by Johnson and Pace to plat approximately 50 acres of AB 258 PP rain survey tracks 5 and 5-03 section 4 
into six general retail lots located on 4th Street north of Hawkins. All right, sir, are you representing the application? Yes, sir. All right, why don't you tell us about it? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Joe Hart. I'm with Johnson & Pace Incorporated here in Longview. Um, we're the, the engineers and surveyors for this, uh, for this plat. Um, uh, really, the primary purpose is to uh, plat the property and dedicate the, the street right-of-way for the 4th Street extension, as well as the uh, necessary utility easements to accommodate the water and sewer lines that will be uh, supporting the, the platted property there. Uh, there's, uh, as of right now, we're pretty much just platting it into large tracks on each side of the road because the, the end users aren't yet determined. So that's why it looks like there's just one great big lot on the east side of the road there. So uh, anyway, it's, uh, that's, it's pretty simple. I, I'm available for any questions you may have. Commission, have any questions for the applicant? The, uh, the 50 acres that we're talking about in the six lots, you're, you're including both sides of the street, right? Yes, sir. Okay. On the, uh, the vote that we've got coming up here pretty soon, is the, car, is the park included in this lot one right here? No, sir. No, sir. The, 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 the plat is only... The, the the dark bold line around the property okay. that's owned by Mr. Gary Van Dusen, and okay. it's none of that in which it falls within this park property. Okay. Would you? I'm sorry. Would you restate what you just said, please? I've zoned out there for a moment. Okay. The the owner of the land is a guy named Gary or the developer Gary Van Dusen, and uh, the. The platted property is the, represented by the dark line that goes around the property, and none of that is within the city park property. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. Is, is that the same developer that's looking at the city park property? No, sir. Okay. There are no further questions from commission at this time. We'll hear from staff. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Uh, the applicant is requesting to plat six general retail lots. Um, as you can see here on this map, and uh, Joe pointed out previously, this is the 4th Street extension. Um, this is private property owned by Mr. Van Dusen. Um, all comments have been addressed, and this plat meets all of the requirements based on the local government code. Staff recommends approval of this plat. I would be happy to answer any questions. We have any questions for staff at this time? Um, the, uh, I guess it would be the south end of it. It says, I think, lot one there, but also you've got lot one on the other side. It's lot one, block two, and this one's lot one, block one. Okay. Okay. All right. If we have no further questions for staff at this time, we will open up the public hearing on application 15-10. Anyone present who would like to speak in favor of this application, please come forward. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Stephen Morgan. I live at 3302 uh, Celebration Way, Longview 75605. Uh, back in 2004, Nancy and I purchased this lot. It was really two lots, lot 16 and 17. I think you're here for the next case. Ma'am? I think you're here for the next case. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> I thought he was called my name. <laughs> no, no, sir. I'm sorry. It's Thank okay. You. No problem. Do we have anyone present who would like to speak in opposition to this application? There being no one present, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, do we have a motion? I move that we approve as read. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve application P15-10. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 1510 is approved.
Okay, our next application on the regular agenda is RP 15-06. Public hearings held to consider application RP 15-06 filed by Stephen Morgan to replat lot 16 and the east 20 feet of lot 17, block 10, Piggy's Estates into two residential lots located on the south side of Wood Place, <laughs> east of 4th Street. Yes, sir. Once again, my all name, right, <laughs> I didn't mean to butt in on y'all's agenda. That's all right. My name is Steve Morgan. I live at 3302 Celebration Way, 75605. Back in 2004, Nancy and I bought uh, a lot 16 and 17, and it also had an additional 23 feet. The original owner was W.D. Northcutt, who was going to build a large home there. He sold it to Ms. Genlet, who was going to do the same. We bought it from Ms. Genlet, thinking we were going to build a large home there. Since then, all our kids left, and we decided to scale way down, and we had David Yale build us a beautiful home over on Celebration Way. Uh, all I'm doing is splitting the lots. I went to uh, Planning and Zoning and asked for uh, 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 directions on how to do this, and uh, Angela happened to be there and I checked with her and she said the lots were big enough to split. So I hired Colin Survey, they did all the work. They have posted the uh, corners of the lots, they have brought in all the ideas of uh, where the sewer and the water and the electricity and all of those things are supposed to be tied in. Uh, they've done their job and uh, thank Mr. Collins for that. And all I'm doing is splitting the lots and uh, and uh, trying to sell two lots. Uh, that was not part of that rest of that street's development. Ms. Genlet wouldn't sell that those lots. To, the guy that developed the rest of that street, uh, Ms. Genlet and this guy had a personality conflict, I think over the price that he was gonna pay her for her property. I think that's what the personality conflict was. But anyway, I bought them from her and I was happy with the price. And since then we decided to split the lots and. I'm trying to get back what I paid for the lots and what I paid in taxes since 2004 on two lots. And that's all I have. Thank you very kindly. Any commission members have any questions for the applicant at this time? There'd be no questions for the applicant staff. Thank you. Um, as Mr. Morgan stated, he's requesting to replat lot 16 and the east 23 feet of lot 17, block 10. Um, into two residential lots um, located west of 4th Street, um, south of Wood Place. Um, as you can see, the surrounding lots, um, the lot size does meet the SF2 requirement, which is 12,000 square feet. Um, both lots exceed the 12,000 square foot minimum requirements for that lot size for that zoning category. Um, staff, this replat complies with all of the City of Longview requirements and staff recommends approval of this replat. I would be happy to answer any questions. Questions for staff? No questions for staff at this time. The public hearing for application RP 15 06 will now be open. Is anybody present to speak in favor of this? Application 15 06? Do we have anybody present to speak in opposition to it? No one coming in. Therefore, the uh, public hearing will now be closed. Do we have a uh, motion? I'll move uh, for approval of RP 15-06. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve application RP 15-06. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Application 15-06 stands approved. <coughs> Our next item is PD 15-14. Public hearings being held to consider application PD 15-14, filed by Mark Patel, requesting to rezone lot one, block one, the Hamptons of Longview from Plan Development General Retail, PD 15-08, to Plan Development General Retail for a hotel located at 1125 East Hawkins Parkway. Yes, sir. Are you speaking on behalf of the applicant? Yes, sir. I am. Okay. I'm Stephen Tramble with Capco Engineering, 13044 County Road 192 in Tyler. And uh, Mr. Patel had asked me to attend in his absence tonight. This uh, 
primarily, I guess, just to answer any questions you guys may have. This, I believe you saw this same application or similar application a couple of yes. months back, but it was actually for a Holiday Inn Express. And since that time, uh, Mr. Patel has decided that for this particular property, he'd like to go with the Courtyard Marriott. So really, this is just a PD change to reflect the new footprint for a that franchise rather than the Holiday Inn Express. So. Do we have any questions for the applicant at this time? I don't know that it's a question, but on that previous uh, agenda, dated July the 21st, it stated 12,900 square feet. This says 58,000 square feet. Am I not comparing apples to apples on this? I don't. I don't know where the 12,000, because the, the square footage is about the same for the hotel. Um, okay. I'm not sure where 12,000 came from, um, but it, it's about approximately the same size it and same height. It's a four-story hotel. It almost sounds yeah. like that was the footprint maybe of just the first story. Yeah. So, and then this is reflecting all four stories yeah. combined. Okay. That's right. It was without restaurant. Is this one without restaurant? Uh, yes. The, the, he does have what he sort of a little breakfast area uh, right. but not an official full restaurant in the hotel okay. do we have any additional questions at this time staff thank you uh, the applicant is requesting to amend PD 1508 um, I think you saw it two months ago um, from a hotel to uh, plan development general retail to allow for a four-story hotel um, as Mr. Tramble stated uh, previously, um, they have adjusted the plan development site plan to reflect a change in um, the brand of hotel. Um, and with the change in brand, the site plan changed quite significantly um, as far as the parking lot layout um, as well as the building layout. Uh, the square footage um, stayed about the same at 50,000 or 58,000 square feet, um, four story hotel with approximately 157 parking spaces. Um, they will have a monument sign not to exceed 150 square feet in size. Um, the applicant has provided a preliminary uh, landscape plan which will be reviewed further through the site plan review process. Um, Hawkins Parkway is a minor arterial road which is appropriate for this type of use as long as access management is followed. Uh, staff finds that the proposed zoning change is consistent with the future land use map and surrounding uses. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for staff at this time? There being no questions for staff, the public hearing will now be open on application PD 15-14. Uh, anyone present wishing to speak in support of it, come forward. Anyone present wishing to speak in opposition to it, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, thank you committee for uh, letting me have a minute. My name is Stacy Killingsworth and uh, I'm an attorney with Stevens Henry here in town and I am here on behalf of, make sure I get this full name correct, ETXL Premier Group LLC and they own some land adjacent to this property and we have some concerns about the plat. We are not necessarily um, objecting to the fact that the zoning be changed to use for a hotel. Our objection is to the fact of where the hotel is located. There is an access easement along the top portion that is a 60 foot access easement that my clients uh, will need to access their property. And as the plat shows, and of course it's kind of hard to, to see up there, it goes along here and the proposed dimensions and drawings of the hotel do significantly encroach upon the easement to the point that it would um, significantly impair their ability to use it. We do expect uh, heavy commercial traffic on that easement and we do believe it is necessary to have use of the entire easement. Um, and we actually believe that we may be able to work with uh, Mr. Patel and his group to 
get an arrangement that would work well for everyone if it would be possible to table this decision until a later date. And I forgot to give my address. It's 222 North Fredonia, Longview, Texas, 75601. Thank you. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the commission at this time? What's the easement trying to access? I, I believe it's trying to access the property that's here. Um, these plans aren't um, directionally, but it, there's a property to the north that is zoned multifamily. And on there's a plat called the Hamptons for this subdivision, and it has a 60-foot access easement um, going through this property right along here. Is it 30 feet um, on each side of the line? Uh, it just says it's a 60-foot access easement. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not dedicated to the public, to the city. It's a private easement, access easement, for the lot to the north. Um, as far as right-of-way widths are concerned, the city of Longview, if it were to ever be dedicated, the city of Longview, we only require for um, a typical local road, we require 50 foot of uh, right-of-way um, with a 29 foot pavement section. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know where 60 came into play, where, where the requirement for 60 came out of. Um, but if it were to ever be dedicated to the public, a 50-foot right-of-way is a typical roadway section for a local street. If I can approach, I might be able to show you a highlighted uh, portion that might oh, help. Oh, actually, I can kind of pull uh, okay. it. I'm sorry. Just to yeah. give you a better perspective. Yeah. The um, access easement goes north along here and then accesses this property up here. And to address the 50 foot versus 60 foot concern, um, certainly that part of town is growing exponentially north of town and that area behind Target is kind of where we're uh, discussing today. And 50 foot may be the traditional, but 60 foot is what was given in the access. And also we believe that it's harder to go back later and add. I know that all of us probably drive down 4th Street in between Walmart and Lowe's and very often wish there was a turn lane, but there's not because uh, it's harder to add it at a later time. Ava, can you go to that other slide? Yes, sir. I think we all get a better this one. perspective. Now, north is ahead. Yep. South is, and we're not talking the east-west easement. We're talking the north-south, which the would north be behind. We're talking the north-south right along here. Theoretically, that's target to the left in the gray area. Yes, correct. Yeah. I can we're pull at up the an next area. lot behind it. You're needing access to your property. There we go, that okay. line. And there's almost in that hue, you can see almost a driveway that's already been, looks like it's- It's bought. already there. There's a there's portion a of it that was built um, when the Hawkins extension was built. Um, that's a 29 foot pavement section um, right now that's currently out there and it stops right about here. <laughs> and a, li a little history about all of this. Originally, all this was owned by the same person uh, way back, I think, 04, 06. Um, where the Hawkins extension was, let me see that mouse. This was all slated to be a residential development. Um, there, this street, there was a roundabout that was constructed and then this leg right here uh, provided to provide access to this property. And this property does have access through a, a county road as well. Um, but that was to provide for future access. Um, when they platted the access, it's a very generic access language. It doesn't dedicate it to the public. It doesn't have language as far as who it's dedicating it to. It just says access easement. So uh, as far as we can find, there's no other instrument filed of dedication further uh, identifying who, what, where, and why. Um, we know the intent was to provide for future access for this development. Um, as it's zoned, it's uh, zoned for multifamily. That was always the intention of this development uh, was to be laid out for multifamily. She had indicated commercial development that would be decided by this group and city council if that would be applicable there. Um, 
when they approached us to potentially reduce that, and I, and I don't know that they are reducing it because I think the site plan that's before you, I think their, their development is outside of that 60 foot and that would be determined later at a later date through the platting process. Um, and we, we consulted with our attorneys because the, uh, the city has not accepted dedication of that 60 foot at this time. So it's not a, a public right of way, it's just a private access easement. And um, so, you know, we'll, we'll let them deal with that as far as how, where, and why they can do that. Um, but I think what they've presented to us uh, has the, the 60 foot maintained. Uh, now what, what they do in the future, if they, they go to dedicate it or not, they're, uh, let me scroll back, wrong direction. I do believe they're maintaining the 60 foot uh, open, free and clear and, and using it as their property because they do own it, so. Um, is, is this inside the city? Yes. yes. This, this is, is the, the previous map. Uh, is the green? The, the, the green is a plan development zoning. I know, but oh. where's the city limits? I know Bella Terra is not it's in outside. Yeah. This is this area in multifamily zoning that they're that they're uh, representing is inside the city, and then all of this down to Tron Road is inside the city. So, along the, the colored areas is where the city's limits is at. Correct. Mm -hmm. I I drove it today, and I, I do believe. Uh, the line is right there. It was very close as I drove. I thought, I can't believe this is inside the city limits, but it, it is, and I apologize for misspeaking about uh, commercial. It is zoned multifamily, and it may be used as that. We don't have any specific plans at this time, but we are concerned about maintaining uh, access, and if, the, if it's outside of the 60 feet, we certainly don't have any complaints about that. Just the drawing that we had seen, and it um, goes sort of angular, and maybe that drawing shows something different. But again, we believe if we have some time to discuss with uh, Mr. Patel, we may be able to understand better. So let me understand. Your concern is knowing where the 60 foot easement is? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Part of, part of it is knowing where the 60 foot easement is. And we do believe we have that. But on this particular plat, we do believe that it is showing the actual property and even the signage encroaching onto the 60 foot easement. Okay. But Stand I believe that he's indicated that on the bigger drawing yeah, it's not shown. Is the, the site, plan re site plan required for this? Yes. Yeah. Site plan is gonna be required from the applicant for this development? Yes. Yes. Okay, is that the site plan you have in hand? Have you reviewed it? Have you reviewed a site plan? Yes, we have. And what we presented to you guys, I think what was initially sent out, and I think we've uh, gave you an amendment to that that you have before you, which shows the, the building not encroaching. Did they send that out? <laughs> Too many papers. One other question I have, are we, we're voting on rezoning right now. This so is strictly, yeah. strictly zoning. Strictly rezoning. Yes. We're not talking about the uh, giving approval on easement or anything like that, just the zoning, correct? Correct. We would have that brought before us. And our concern, and Mark's concern, there will be one more step of that. All we're doing is zoning it. Then the correct. Next you're, you're approving the site plan as, as okay, the zoning. Sorry. And staff has reviewed it, and it is uh, consistent with our land use goals and comprehensive plan and, and consistent with our development regulations. And is there any signage in the easement she's mentioning or is is the signage outside of the easement? I think the, the, the signage is right si outside of the easement. It just is at the very edge of it, I yes. believe. Okay. Well, if there's been an amendment, we, we probably have not seen it. We have the, the hearing that was sent out, you know, to the landowners and uh, the notice of the hearing. At least on this, it appears that there's probably a, a porta cache, I believe, for uh, the drop off of the hotel. And that appears that it's encroaching on the easement as well as landscaping encroaching on the easement and potentially um, a few other items along this. Staff, site plan will require that there be no encroachments on the easement, correct? They, 
you know, and, that, and that's probably a legal question. Um, it's still their property. They, I'm um, talking they, about the plan, not what they actually do. Sure, I think the plan that was submitted <laughs> initially uh, shows a reduction in that easement to 50 feet and shows the encroachment. I think um, yesterday they submitted a revision to that that shows the uh, the shifting outside of that 50 foot and I'd probably be better served by the uh, representative to speak on that. I do know that early last week, uh, Mr. Patel, Mr. A.J. Patel, and then the representatives of the North property, they had conversations, and it was obvious that they didn't want to keep that entire 60-foot clear, like she's saying. So mid, mid to late last week, we did revise the site plan, and now there is nothing encroaching, no signage, uh, no uh, the carport, none of that is actually encroaching into that 60-foot easement at all. We didn't even try to get it down to the 50-foot. We're keeping it a 60-foot clear access easement now. So there will be no encroachment in the 60 foot. That's based on the, the site plan that I, I believe okay. you guys have. Staff, I asked again, you have a site plan in hand that reflects no encroachments. That's what you're presenting to us. That's yes, correct. Okay. Come on forward, Mr. Allen. I could be compliant. Uh, Sydney Allen, Longview. Uh, speaking from past experience, I could be completely incorrect, but I remember one thing, uh, deed restrictions are not uh, part of the considerations when you're doing this, and I believe this is a private easement, isn't it? it it's not a public easement. Correct, and, and there's no, to my knowledge, there's no, uh, in the deed restrictions, there's no mention of the easement. It's The only place it's uh, mentioned is on the plat itself. It's just delineated and it just says access easement. It doesn't state who it's for the use and benefit of, uh, anything beyond that. So uh, we felt and we consulted with our city attorneys that if the property owner who owns the, the property interest wants to reduce that easement width, as far as we're concerned, they have that right to do so, especially through the, the plan development process and through the platting process. And that's why the original submittal that was submitted, um, that was sent out to you guys, we were recommending approval. Now, since then, it seems like uh, they have worked to try to accommodate the, the wishes of the property to the north. And uh, I guess very late have submitted a, a revision showing uh, removal of that encroachment. So. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is a governmental body and what you're talking about here is a civil manner which is separate from uh, a governmental body is the way I understood Correct. it. So it, you're, uh, you're not here to decide civil matters, you're here to decide uh, government issues and, and in other words you can have a private easement or you can have private deed restrictions which are separate my understanding from what you're considering is a governmental body. Correct, we don't yes. have the authority no. to enforce those restrictions. Plan development, I've slept a few times since we talked about this last, but we got a plan development here, which means that we would have a site plan that would come to us to tell us specifically what the plan is, correct? And correct. that's what we're doing, is looking at a specific plan that is giving us the measurements and everything on what they're going to do within that PD. Is yes. that not correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's what we're voting on, correct? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. But not everyone has seen the revised plan. Who? Who is it that needs to see it? None of this table has it. Okay. This isn't the revision no i'm sorry the revision was sent a little late and so we didn't get it to you but it just shifted it outside of that easement and y'all can i think it's up on that table somewhere there's a large plan Thank you. 
As additional Would information, you, uh, let Ms. Killingsworth review that since everybody else in the room has. Absolutely. I don't want her to feel and I, left out. I do apologize for Sorry. the confusion because I do believe we didn't receive that until yesterday, and it is what's reflected in the PowerPoint. So I do apologize for that. Thank you for the opportunity. And just for clarification, the easement is also referenced in the deed where uh, ET uh, XL acquired the property in their warranty deed. Um, it is referenced and uh, as part of the property description and the, all of the property is described and then the bottom it says together with the easement. Um, and it references a clerk file number, but it's my understanding that file number was a typo. Uh, and we do have the correct, I've, I've been on the phone with the clerk this afternoon and they were very helpful in the clerk's office and helped point us uh, to the right file number. Mr. Tremble, uh, as representing the applicant, you are acknowledging the existence of the easement, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. There is an easement right. on our track, yes. The, the property is, is owned by our client, the Patels. They own the property, but there is a dedicated easement okay. across the track. Yes. That is correct. We don't dispute the, the ownership of the property, just that there's an easement. And, and based on this, it certainly looks like it is... Um, not encroaching on the the 60 uh, foot easement i would like the opportunity to show it to my clients for their review as well um, but based on this and mr trammell's representation it does give us a much more uh, comfort knowing that it is not encroaching on the easement okay thank you any other questions or discussions on this uh, pd anyone else speaking in opposition to it. No one coming forward. The public hearing on PD 15-14 is now closed. Do we have a motion? A motion for approval. Second. It's been moved and second to approve PD 15-14. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? PD 15-14 stands approved. Thank you. Staff update. All items that were presented at council were approved. Okay, any citizen comment? There being none, this meeting of the uh, Longview Planning Zoning Commission stands adjourned. Thank you.